In this video, you will learn Flutter with the latest Flutter version. Let's start right now. In this video, I will show you the fundamentals of Dart. Okay, so first thing first, you will go on dartpads.dev and then you will click on run. You will see uh, on the screen console, we have all the thing that has been print from the function for loop. So first thing first, we will remove this one and we will go from the basics. You can start by writing something like print hello. And now because you use a function like print, print something, you need to put a semicolon with Dart. And I will press run. You will see on the screen, you will have hello. Perfect. The next thing you can do with Flutter is uh, create variables. Usually when you code, you will create variables like this, a variable, but with Flutter and Dart, it's very specific. So if you want a string variable, you will say string, and you will say, by example, this one will be called text, and this will be a text, hello. Again, you will need to put the semicolon at the end just to define the things. And now you can just put the string, and a string is just a text value. You can put the string inside the print. So now if I save and I run, uh, you will see we still have hello. So if I say hello text and I run this, you will see it will be hello text. All right. So this is one kind of variable. You can add another kind of variable, which is the double. This one will be a decimal. You can say is equal to 5.5. You can also define variables int, which is numbers. And this is round number. So it will be five, by example. And if you want to display it inside the print, you can add two other prints. You can use decimal dot to string like this. And you will do the same thing for the number, number dot to string like this. And now if you just run, you will see hello text, and then you will see 5.5 and five. All right, so this is kind of, this is the variables you can use with Flutter instead of using var. The next thing I want to show you is uh, in Flutter, you have the constant. So by example, we create a constant string uh, food is equal to pizza. And we'll create another, another one. This one is the final string, uh, by example, topping. And this one will be equal to uh, bacon. All right, and put the semicolon at the end. So everything is working fine. And now if you want to know the difference between both of them, I have a perfect place for you. And the difference between a const and a final is this. So the value must be known at compile time. This is for a const and a const mean a constant. And then you have the final. The final is used at the runtime. If this mean nothing for you, no worry, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that much, okay? If you have already some coding experience, you will understand this part, but if you don't have coding experience, no problem. I will, sh I will show you like exactly when we use the cons and the final in the further videos, okay? So at least for now, you know the definition of both of them. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to create, by example, a switch case. So we'll do the same thing. I will delete a couple of things like this. And now we will create a switch case. So you will say switch. And then you can create, by example, inside what you want to validate. Okay. A switch case will be uh, something that uh, you put something inside and uh, you will validate if the thing is equal to another thing and you will return something. So the switch text, you can, you can create a you can create a case, by example, if the text is equal to high, then you will put the two point and you will print something. You will say, by example, print um, the text is high, like this. And you put the semicolon. After, the, after this, you need to break because this will go, by example, you will start inside the switch, then the text will be validate. If it's the same thing, then it will print this. And then, and then it will break and it will go outside the switch. That's the purpose of the switch. Next thing you can do is create another switch case. For example, we will say this one will be hello text because we want to have the same thing as the text that we want to validate. And we will print success like this. After this, you can create also a default. So default. And you will print, for example, nothing found. 
and the thing found. All right. So now if we try to print, uh, at the end, you don't need to print anything. I will just run this and you will see on the screen, this should uh, send success. This is because we have the text. We go inside a switch. We validate if the text is equal to high. It's not the case, so we go in the, on the other case. We validate if the text is hello text. If it's the case, we will print success. So let's try to add something else like hello text add. Now, if we run, if we run this, you will see it will be nothing found because we go inside the default. No, uh, no, no case has been equal to the text. Okay, so this was how to create a switch with, uh, with Dart. Now we will create a if else statement. So I will create a if, I will say if the text is equal to uh, high, then we will print uh, success like this. And otherwise, we will say else. This is how to create the if else condition. We will say else, we will print uh, failure. Something like this, and you put the semicolon. Well, let's run this, and we should have failure on the console. And here we go, we have failure. But if instead we put hello text inside the, the condition, and we run this, this means it will be true because the text is equal to hello text, and we will have success. So we have one last thing uh, that I want to show you, and it's the for loop. So for the for loop, we had it when we started, I will create another one. Let's do this. So we'll say, we can even remove the string. We will say for, we will call this a variable int equals zero, or you can call this a int. Oops, sorry. You can, you can call this a variable or a int because in Flutter, we are very specific. And then you will say i is smaller than five. You put the semicolon and you should put a semicolon there also. And then after you will say I plus plus. I will tell you what does this mean. Then you will print the I dot to string. Okay, I will put the, at the end of the print this. And now if we run this, we should have a zero, one, two, three, four, something like this. Yeah. Okay, so how does this work? First, we go inside a for condition. We say uh, for this value, where the i is equal to zero, I want to go five times through this loop. I want to go i is equal to zero. Then we add one to the i, and so now it will be one. And we will do this loop five times because we want to finish at five. And each time we will print the value i. So first time we will print zero. The second time we will go i plus one. This this just means we will add one, okay? And we will go plus one, then we will print the value one, we will print the value two, three, and four. So if you do 10 instead, and you run, you will see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, nine, just like that. All right, so this was the fundamentals of Dart. Pretty simple. If you have already some coding experience, you already understand everything I just show you. But if you are new to coding, that was pretty much all the basic you need for coding. So that's pretty much it. And on the next video, we will start working on Flutter. That's it. Bye. Let's learn about the fundamentals of node safety with Dart and Flutter. There is two things you need to know. First, what mean the question mark? And then the exclamation point. So to learn this, we will start with creating a boolean is admin set as false, by example. And then we will print this is admin variable. So what happens if, if I run this thing, we will see on the console the false. Great. Now what happens if I try to say the is admin is equal to null? You see that with Flutter and Dart, we have a problem. It's not possible because a boolean is a true or false value. But if you use the question mark, this means this variable is now nullable, which means the Boolean is admin can be true, false, and null. So if I run this, you will see it will be null on the console. Great. So now you understand the question mark. This means it can be nullable. 
Now let's learn about the exclamation point. So what I will do is I will create a text. So I will say this is a string text, which is equal to pizza. And then what I will do is I will create a, a condition if the text is equal to pizza, like this. So we know as human that this is true, but the code is not sure yet if it's true. So what will happen if, if I say, by example, first I will remove the null because this means the same thing. The Boolean is admin is now null. And now what I will do is I will say, if this is true, the text is equal pizza, then I will say is admin, admin is equal to true. So we will set this value as true. So it's not null anymore. But what happens if we create a condition again by saying is admin? And then we create a condition inside by trying to print something, by example, hello. You will see that we have a problem with Flutter and Dart because if I go over, Flutter don't know if this value is null, true, or false. So we know that this will be true. So if we are 100% sure that this will be true or false, and it's not null anymore, we can use the exclamation point to tell Flutter I am absolutely sure that this value will not be null. And I will run this. You will see, we will see print hello. So we have the hello and the print through. That's great. But what happens if it's not actually true? You need to be careful because if it's, by example, we think it will not be null and we run this, we will have a problem. We will have an error. So make sure that you use the exclamation point only if you're absolutely sure that this will not be null. So this was the fundamentals of null safety with Flutter. See you in the next one. Bye. Now, in this section of the course, we will create this application with Flutter. I will show you step by step everything you need to learn, and we will do it together with some practical exercise. So I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, the first thing we'll do is create a new Flutter project. I will show you how I do this. First, I open what we call the comment prompt, or you can open the terminal if you work on Mac. So I will open the, the terminal. I will bring this on this page, and now I will create a Flutter project. So when you navigate through this comment prompt or the terminal, you can navigate using what we call CD. When you, when you write CD, you can write, by example, desktop, and now I will navigate through the desktop folder. If I want to go back one folder earlier, like in the in my name folder, I can say CD and add two points and press enter. Now I will be in the document user and my name. All right. I will go back inside the desktop. And if you're not sure like uh, which, doc, which uh, documents are available, you can say by example, first I will go inside my desktop. If if I want to know like all the files available or all the, the folder available in the desktop, I can just write ls and press enter. You will see I have some file, 555 text, capture, and I have Flutter course, this is documents. So if you want to navigate through the, the folder app one, by example, you could, you could say cd app one, and now you're inside the app one, all right? The next thing uh, we'll do is first I will cd and go back, you probably already know this, but this is for people that have never code before. So now you are on the same page. For the desktop, I will create a Flutter project. I will say Flutter create, and this will be by example, uh, Flutter app welcome. Okay, we'll call this one. You can change the name if you want. Make sure that you don't have capitals. Okay, you see I, I have no capital and make sure that you don't put spaces like Flutter something. Make sure that you put an underscore. So Flutter app welcome. I would call this this one like this and I would press enter. Now this will create a Flutter project and we will wait like five seconds. It's done. Let's go. Now we can close this and we can open a folder. You can see I am inside a Visual Studio Code and you have the choice between Android Studio and Visual Code. I prefer Visual Code because it's lighter it's easier to use on any computer. Android Studio is like a very, very big software and I don't really like it. I prefer this one. Also, you have extensions and all the stuff. 
I will click on open folder. Now we'll go inside my desktop. So if I find it, desktop, and you will see I have the Flutter app welcome I just created. I click on this and now I, I say select folder. But if you go inside, you will see you have all these files. This is all the file for Flutter. I will go back and click one on Flutter app welcome and select folder. Now we are inside our Flutter project. You will target the library folder like this and you will click on main. You will see this is our application, our basic application. If you want, you can click on this icon, start debugging. Make sure that you are inside the main.dart, otherwise you will not see this button. And you click on this. This will start the Flutter application. Also, as soon as you click on it, you will see you go inside the run and debug tab. You have multiple tab inside. We'll go back inside the Explorer. While we are waiting for the application to start, I will show you something. You can see that we have multiple icon before each folder. I like this. If you want to have the same thing, you can go inside the extensions and inside the extension, you will add the uh, material icon theme. Okay. So you search for this, you say material, uh, material icon theme, and you just install this. You see the button. Okay. And the next thing I want to show you other extension that you should really have because it's the best extension. You can add the better comments. This will allow you to add comments inside your visual studio. Like this, you have comments with colors, which is pretty cool. You should already have the dart extension and the flutter extension. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the thing you should have. Um, after this, you see the flutter application has just started. So now I will put this on the side and on the next video, I can close this tab. We don't use it and reopen the main. On the next video, I will show you a couple of commands that you can use, uh, which is pretty useful. And then I will explain you what does this mean in the code and how do we create applications. So I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you two commands that you should remember when you use Visual Studio. So the first one, you can see that when we start the application, we have this uh, bar on the side and we have this debug console. Maybe your debug console is on the, uh, the left, but whatever, the right, but whatever, okay? You can press Control G like this, and this will hide and show the debug console. This is really cool because if you have it always, you don't have a lot of place to code. So remember this one, Control G, okay? The next one is Control B. This one will allow you to remove the tab for the Explorer, like this, Control B. So this was two commands that you should remember, Control G and Control B. I see you in the next video to explain you what is this code and how do we use this code to create this basic application. Okay, so in this video, I will show you uh, what does this code mean and how do we create this application with the code inside the main.dart. The first thing we will do is remove all the comments because this is ugly. So you can see that when you have double dash like this, this is no code and this is only comments. So I will remove this. I will also remove this and I will remove all the, the comments. Okay, you can do the same thing as I do. I will remove the comments so we can see it's way better. All right, we remove this and this should not be long. I remove something bad. If you see red thing, like by example, like this, you see red on the side and red like this, you have delete something uh, too much. So make sure that you just delete the comments. All right. I will delete this just to have the same line. And I think we have another one like this. Perfect. So now we have just clean code, no talking or stiff stuff like this. So, um, how does this work? First thing first, you will see we have on the top, the main. The main will run the application. And which application it will run? It will run the My App. Where is this one? If you double click, you will see this is highlighted, which means the class My App is what we go inside, what go inside the Run App. Then, this is a stateless widget. Stateless just mean the screen will never change. If the user like 
uh, press something or do something with it, the screen will never change. Good. I will show you after what is the other thing. It will be the stateful widget, but let's continue. We have this, then inside we use the override build. The build will build what is inside my app and we will build the widget material app. In Flutter, everything is a widget. Does this mean you will create something and then you will add a widget inside. It will create, by example, the bar you can see. Then you will add a widget inside, which it will be the text. And it's just widget over widget over widget that will, at the end, create an application. So we have the first one, Material App. This one is like um, what uh, is about like all the application. If you want to, uh, to, by example, change the theme of your app, this will be inside the Material App. So you can see just right there, you have the theme data. Inside this one, you have the home. The home will have inside the my home page. My home page, if you double highlight, double click, it will highlight this one. So you can see that this was a widget. Inside you have the home, which have a widget inside. And then you have my home page. This one, in this case, is a stateful widget. This means the screen can refresh. So if the user do something on the screen, the screen will refresh. You can see that we have a button. When we press this, go up the counter. Okay, It's because we have a refresh screen. It's possible with the stateful widget. Uh, other things, you will see that we have a title. This is, you will call this thing. And inside, you will also add this information, a title, which you will get from the string title. So you will be able to access this information. We go, we continue. You will see we have a void increment counter. This is a function and the function will set state. When you use the set state, this means the screen will refresh with the new information inside. You can see uh, we have a counter, an int counter, which start at zero. And then we refresh the screen by adding one to the counter. So you will see this is a lot of information and it's okay if you're a little bit confused right now. I just want to like understand the first big picture of what is Flutter and then we will delete everything and do it by ourselves. So we have the function, then we will build inside this stateful widget. If you remember, we have a stateful widget. We will build and we will build a scaffold. This is the skeleton of the app. You have the app bar. The app bar is like the blue thing on the top. Then we have a body center. This is all the middle of the app. You can see we have a text widget. You have pushed this button this many times. This is the widget. You have another widget, which is the counter. The counter is the number, like 10. And when you press on this button, this button will be what we call a floating action button. And the floating action button, when you press on it, will trigger the function increment counter. If you remember, this is the function that refresh the screen and add one to the counter. Okay, so this was it. We have also the, the child, which is an icon add. So this was what create this application, which you can refresh the screen. What we will do is on the next video, we will delete pretty much everything and we will start building our application. This one, I have saved it inside another screen. You see, we will build all this application together step by step. So I see you in the next video to start building this application starting from absolute scratch. Bye. In this video, we will delete everything and start from absolute scratch. So from the line 21 till the end, you will delete everything, okay? And now you will delete also this little line of code in the home. You will just keep the comma. And we want to create what will go inside the home, which will be a state less widget, state less widget. So you can see I have access like this. If I write ST, you will see I have access to those little bugs. Okay. And those little bugs are accessible just because I use an extension. So stateless widget, if I press on it, this will code everything for myself. Okay. Which you will save a lot of time if you use those extensions. So to use those extensions, you will go inside extensions. And you will add the one called the awesome flutter snippet, this one. Okay, so you can write awesome flutter snippet. And you need to install this one. 
Otherwise, you will have to write everything by yourself. This one, you can install it. Okay, so now that you have this installed, remember that you can use, I will close this. Remember that you can use the Control B to remove the bar on the side. And I will redo it with you. Now that you have the extensions, um, you will write STL. And by writing STL, you will see you have access to the Flutter Stateless widget and the Flutter Stateful widget. If you want to have more information about it, you can click the little arrow Renode. So you can use the arrow to navigate inside the menu and you can press the arrow to have more information about anything. So if you go down, you will see you have more information about all of them. So we will use the stateful widget. I will remove the information and I will click on this. Perfect. Now we have everything right in for us. You can see I made a little mistake. I used the stateful widget. I wanted to use the stateless widget. So STL and stateless widget, this one. We will call this one the welcome page, by example. Okay. And now if you want to put the welcome page inside home, you just have to write welcome page and you can select in your menu, you have two options, the one without the bracket and the one with the brackets. I always use the one with the brackets because it will code more things. So you don't have to write the brackets for yourself. I will press on it. Perfect. Now we have a little uh, blue things under a little bar. It said, if you go over the, the widget, welcome page, you'll see prefer a const. A const is a constant. This mean because we use the state less widget, the screen will never change. It will always be the same. So this can be a constant. So I will write const before. So every time you have an error with Flutter, this is just a warning. You can go over and you will have the information what you need to do. Okay. So I will write const. And now we have this information. What else can we do? If we save, what happened? You can press control S and this will trigger this button, the hot reload. So with Flutter, you have two choices. You can use the restart, which is the green arrow or the hot reload. Hot reload will just refresh the screen with the new data. The reload, the restart, sorry, will restart the application completely. Okay. So sometimes we will use this one. Sometimes we will use this one. I will show you every time. So now if I save, I will see a black screen. This is because we don't use the scaffold widget. So let's use this one. I will write scaffold like this. So you just start to write scaffold. You will see that with Flutter, if you want to write a widget, it needs to start with a capital letter. So you will write scaffold. You will see the option and you will select this one with the uh, bracket if you have it. Otherwise you will see you may have this one, but use the one with the bracket when you can. So we'll click on it. And now if I save control S, uh, just before I will add a constant, you see, if we go over the scaffold, you go down, you see, prefer a constant variable. Okay. I will add, I will add this before. And now we don't have errors. If I save control S or I press this button, which is the same thing. Okay. I click on this, this will refresh the screen and we will see a white screen. So this was the scaffold widget starting from absolute scratch. Uh, the next thing we can do is we could change the primary swatch to red because we want our application to be a red theme. All right. You will see nothing. I will click on this button, but just to refresh the, the entire application, because this is like, you need to refresh the entire application to make sure that Flutter understand we have changed the theme. All right. The next thing we want to do is we will work inside the scaffold widget. We will add other widget inside this one, like the app bar and the body. So this will be on further video. In the next one, I will just show you how to remove the debug banner like this. You can see this little bar on the top. I will show you how to remove this. See you in the next one. In this video, I will show you how to remove the debug banner. You will see it's pretty simple. Inside the material app, you will have arguments. So with Flutter, we work with arguments and a widget. That's all it is. Okay. If you have a widget, which start always with a capital letter, then inside you have an argument, you have multiple argument actually, and each argument will have something inside. Some of them is widgets like this one, the theme and the home. And that's how it works. 
arguments always start with the uh, little letter and widget always start with the capital letter. So the argument is the lowercase, all right? So we will add another argument. I will press control space, and this would show us all the possible arguments that you can use. If you use the arrow, you can select what you want. The one we, we want is uh, with Flutter, you can just start to write what you think it is. So it's a debug banner. Let's write debug, uh, debug. And now you see we have three options. The debug show check mode banner, material grid, semantic debugger. If you're not sure about it, you can click the little arrow and this will give you more information. And if we go over the show check and mode banner, you will see turn a little debug banner uh, and indicate the app it's in debug. This is just to show you this is in debug mode. I think it's pretty ugly, so I will remove it. I will say debug show check mode banner. I will click on this or you can press enter because you are selecting this thing. Press enter. And now if you're not sure what you need to put inside, you just go over the debug show check mode banner and you will see it's a Boolean. This mean is a true or false value. So I will say false. I don't want to see this. And now I will save control S and you will see this is now gone. This was how to remove the debug show banner. And also I have to teach you what is the difference between an argument and a widget. Widget always start with a capital letter, arguments with a lowercase. All right, in the next video, we will start and create a nav bar inside our application. See you in the next one, bye. In this video, we will work on the app bar widget. So inside the scaffold, we have this, the scaffold is the skeleton. First thing you will create or add is control space. This will show you all the possible arguments inside the scaffold. The one we will use is what we call the app bar. Because uh, I think this takes a lot of place, I will just remove the information okay, by reclicking the icon. So I click on app bar. Uh, this will take an app bar widget with the capital letter again. It's very important. Otherwise, it will not work. You click app bar by pressing enter. And now you have a nav bar. You can see that we have an error. How do we solve error with Flutter? It's very simple. You go over the thing and you scroll down, you will see the constructor being called is in a constant. This means it's not a constant, uh, the, the app bar is not a constant. All right, how do we solve this? We say that the scaffold will be a constant, which is false because inside this is not a constant. So by removing what is on the top, you will see now it will work. If I save, you will see that we have a red app bar, just like this, very simple. Now you want to add, I don't know, a title inside your app. So you go inside the app bar, you go check all the arguments possible, and one of them will be called the title argument. You click on this, and now you want to create a text. How do you use a text inside Flutter? Well, it's pretty simple. There is a widget just for this, and it's called the text widget with the capital letter again. So you write text, and then you will select this one, the text with the bracket. You press enter. And now you need to put something inside, some data. So I will remove data. You see we have an error. You just go over the text. If you scroll down, you will see uh, one positional argument is expected, but zero found, all right? What does text expect to have inside? If you go over and on the top, you will see that the text widget, the first thing we need to put inside is a string data. So inside you need to put a string, very simple. You will have the, br uh, the bracket like this, the whatever, how it calls, you will add this and you will write your text. For example, I will write welcome. And if you save, you will see uh, this added automatically the const, sorry for this. Uh, so I will just, if you save, you will have welcome and you will have the title. Now you will, add, you will need to add the const like this because it's a constant. This will never change. If you use a Mac, uh, a Mac to create your Flutter apps, you will see that your title is on the middle right now. This is okay. So what you can do uh, to put everything in the, cent in the center, you can say title and you have the center title argument. If you go over, you will see that this take a Boolean. So we will say true. And now everyone will have the title in the center. 
The next thing you can go, uh, the next thing you can do inside the nav bar is the background color. So you can use the background color. So this is an argument. If you just start writing background, you will see you will have the option automatically. If you don't have it, you can just press, for example, if I go outside, you can just press Control Space. Now you have all the options, and I will press Enter. This will save you a lot of times. Next, inside the background color, this take a color. So you go over, you will see this take a color. How do, how do we add colors in Flutter? Super simple. You write colors with plurals, with the S, so colors, with a capital letter. Make sure it's a capital letter, because it's always argument, widget, argument, widget, you know? Uh, in, in some cases, it's just a Boolean you need to put inside, but you get the point. So you say colors, dot, and you have all your colors you want to use. We will use light green, by example, and I will save. You will see now we have the abar green. This will override the color primary swatch red, okay? Um, what else can I tell you? So make sure that you have a S, okay? It's very important. I will just change this for a red accent like this, and I will save. You will see this is a different red. So if I remove the background color and I save, you will see this is a more uh, red red, and this one is just with a little accent on it. I prefer this color. So I will use this one. This was how to create an app bar with Flutter. In the next video, we will start and add an image inside your application. So I see you in the next one. Bye. In this video, I will show you where I get all my image and icons from a website called from the website called the icon8.com. So icons8.com. You will have the illustrations. Usually what I do is I go right there, I write illustration, and I will write by example welcome and press enter. This will give me like multiple icon or like animation I can use. Uh, I think I really like, I don't know, this one. So I will click on this one. And now you can just download and you have the download a low resolution, which is absolutely free. So you can download image if you want. I will download some random image and we will start working on how to add an image inside your Flutter app in the next video. So this is where I get my image from. You can do the same thing or you can get your image from another website. It's up to you. So I see you in the next video and I will show you how to add an image inside your app. This is three image that I've decided to take for the application. So I have the rock, welcome and yay. So I will just put this file on the side and to add image inside your Flutter app, it's, I will show you how the process, all the process. So you press control B to reopen the side. The first thing you need to do is create a folder for those image. So what you can do is go at the end, right click and say new folder. And now you will write this one image. I will press enter. We have a folder image. I will take all these three image, take it and put it inside image. All right. The next thing you will need to do is go inside the popspec.yarn. And what I will do is I will add the image. So you can scroll down in the popspec.yarn and you will see a section called the assets like this. So it's very important that you do exactly what I do. You will see asset, you will put your cursor before the A and you will delete twice. One, two, okay? And now you will do the same thing for this line of code. You will put your arrow after the hashtag, you will arrow to the right once and you will delete twice. One, two. It's very important that you do the same thing. Otherwise it will mess up this file, it's, okay? And now you see I have a little thing Right there, I will press Ctrl G to remove this because I have more place to work on. And now I will delete this thing. I will just say image. This will make sure that the assets image is now accessible inside our Flutter project. So now what I will do is I will click this get package. Okay. You see this is running the Flutter pub get running. All right. Now we will have access to this asset thing. Um, the other thing I want to show you, we will go back inside the main. So inside the main, you will see that uh, after the app bar argument, so this is the app bar, 
this is the last thing of the app bar. We have the comma. After the comma, we will write the body. The body will be all the center of the application. Inside this one, we will write image.asset, okay? And inside this, the asset, you will see that this required a string name. This is the path where the image is located. So you will write a string and you will write image. So make sure that it's exactly the same thing. Image, because the folder is called image. And then you will write welcome.png or the name of your image. My image is welcome.png. So I will write welcome.png. And now if I save, you will see that it's working. But sometime it will not work, okay? And what you will have to do is to kill the application. So you will stop the application because sometimes when you add folders like this and add image, you will see like a box and it will not work. So if you have something like this, you just close the application and now you reopen this application by going inside the main and you re-click this thing, this start debugging, okay? Uh, when, because we have to wait for the application to restart, uh, we will do something else between this time. So I will go inside the popspec.yarm again, this file, you have access right there, and I will delete all the comments because this is pretty ugly. So usually this is what I do when I start a new project. I remove all the comments, make absolutely sure that you don't delete the real code. The comments inside this file is only the hashtag, okay? So you can remove all of this and make sure that you see Copertino icon is on the, there is two space before. So if you delete something and it's now one space, make sure that you put two space. It need to be exactly how it was. If you want, you can keep all the, the message if you don't want to mess anything. But um, if you want, you can just clean everything like this. Just make sure that everything is on the same line. You see right there? I made a little mistake. I just have to make sure that it's to space. Now I can delete everything else. And this file is way more clean. All right, so now we have the image and that was how to add an image with Flutter. It was pretty simple. So in the next video, I will show you also how to add an image, but from the network. So you will not need to put the image inside a folder. I see you in the next video, bye. Okay, so if you want to add an image from the network, you can go on Google, by example, and you can write, I will write Einstein. I will go inside the image, and now I will just select any image I want. So I will click on this one, then I will click right click, and I will open this image in a new tab. So I click on this. Now I can go inside this one, and you can see that we have all the link of the image. Make sure that the end of the link finish with something that makes sense, like .png, .gpg, .gpeg. If it's a, like a long text like this, super random, don't use it. Don't use this one. Take another image. Okay. You need to make sure that it ends up with something that makes sense. I will take this. I will copy the link. I will close this and this. And with the link, you can go back inside your code and you can replace this image asset. So for now, what I will do is I will just comment this. So I will press two space, uh, two bar like this. So now it's not, it's now a comment. It's no code anymore. And I will add the image with a capital letter dot network. And inside you will put the source of the image. So I will press, I will put this. I will press control B just so we can see a little bit better. And now I will put a comma just because it makes more sense. Now you can see that the text is really long on the same line. So what you can do is you can press right click, refactor. Oops, no, it's not this one, sorry. It's right click and format document. And now you see everything will uh, be structured. If I press Ctrl Z, you will see it's not structured, but in the further of this course, I will always use the comment Shift Alt F. I will say I will format the document, but I will use this comment. This is way faster. So I will press Shift Alt F. Sorry, like this. And now the, the, the format is now perfect. It's way better to read. And if I restart the uh, refresh the application or Control S to save, you will see that now we have the image from the network. 
this was how to add an image from the network. Now what I will do is I will remove all of this just to keep the image asset because we don't want the image from the network. This was just to show you how it works. And I will press Control Save. And now let's say I have, I don't know, um, I will remove this little thing, okay, the, the comma. I will save. I will format document, sorry. Now you see we have two brackets. With Flutter, what I like to do and to make sure that the code is very clean, every time I have two brackets, one after the other, I put a comma. So now when you use the format document, so control, uh, I don't know what is like, right click is this format document. Just remember the command for yourself. When I use the format document, boom, this will replace the code perfectly and it's way more readable. So that was how to add an image with Flutter, how to use also the, refact uh, the format document. Great. I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to put the image inside the center of the application. For this, we have a widget, which we call the center widget. If you want, you can write, you can like delete this, write the widget center widget and put the information inside. So this is what we will do first. And after I will show you a shortcut, how you can add widget faster. So first I will control X. This will just uh, delete the text and save it. Okay. So if I press control V after this will reput the text. So it's just a cut. I will cut the, the information control X and I will write the center widget. I will press enter. I, I was pretty quick. So center with the capital letter, you use the one with the bracket always press enter. And now you will see this take a constant. So I will write constant before const and inside the center, when you want to use like a widget inside another one, usually it will be called a child. So you will have a widget inside. You will have the argument child. If you want, you can press control space to see all the arguments available. And I will use the child argument. This mean it will be the widget inside this one. So we can, we can just control V. So paste the image we had previously. Now you see, we have an error. If we go at the end again, you will see what is the problem. The constructor being called isn't a const. This means we just have to remove the const of the center. And now if we format document, this will replace everything. If we save, you will see the image now in the center. Okay. Now it's time to show you how to add a widget with a little shortcut. I will cut this again, control X, and I will delete this center widget. I will control V to re add the image. If I save, you will see the images on the top. Now what I will do is I will do something which we call refactor. So you go over the widget, which is an image in this case, you right click and you see this time it's not the format document, but the refactor. So you can use the command control shift error if you want. So I'll click on refactor. This will give us multiple widget that we can use to wrap this one. And we will say, I want to wrap with a center widget. And I will click this one. Boom. You can see we have the center inside. We have the child argument and the image. Everything has been done for us. So if I press the uh, format document, nothing will change. And this is because we need the comma between those two brackets. So I will add the comma and I will say format document. This is the same thing, but way much faster. So I will press control S and now it's now in the center. All right. This was the center widget and I see you in the next video. Bye. This is our first practical exercise together because in the previous video, I've shown you a lot of things and I want to make sure that you understand and register those things. What you will do is you will go uh, after the line at the line 21 and you will delete everything. Okay. That's your goal. Also, you can delete these little things. Okay. Now what I want you, I want you to do is to recreate the application that we have right there, but I want some different things. What I want is the color instead of red, I want this to be green. And also instead of using this image, I want you to use another image. By example, you can use the rock image or any image you have downloaded. Okay. So this is what I will do in the next video. I will show you again 
super fast, step by step, how to recreate this app with the green app bar and this image instead of this one. So I will close this. This is your task. Start right now, recreate everything from scratch at this point, like you have all this code, but recreate everything. I want you to have an image in the center, another image with the green, the green app bar. That's it. That's your task. Do it yourself. If you're not able in the next video, I will, I will do the solution in one video super fast. See you in the next one. Bye. Okay. So this is the solution, how to create the app bar green and change the, uh, the image for another image, but again, from scratch. Again, make sure that you are able to do it by yourself first. And if you're not able, this is the solution. So first I will write state STL so I can create a stateless widget. Next, I will call this one the welcome page. Perfect. And I will put the welcome page inside the home. I will say welcome page and I need to put the bracket to call this welcome page. I have a little thing. I need to put the const because it's a constant. And now we can keep the primary swatch to red. It doesn't matter. Next, uh, inside the return, inside the build, we have the return. We use this scaffold widget. And now I can put the const before and save. If I save, you will see this is the app we have right now. Inside this one, we use the argument app bar. The widget will be the app bar widget, this one. The, we can change the title. The title will be a text widget. Again, this is super fast, but you should be able to do it by yourself. Because we have two brackets, one after the other, I will put a comma. The text will take a string inside and the string will be the welcome. I will format document. Now I see I have a problem because I use the const. I will remove this. The text now need a constant. The title, if I save, this is what we'll see. The title, we can change uh, the center title for true. And then we can add also the color background, background color. We can say colors.green and I will save. Perfect. Now we need an image in the center. This For this, we need to use the body argument. So body, we have the center widget because we want this image to be in the center. The child, the child argument will be the image. So image.asset. The name will be the path of the image, which is, which is inside the image folder slash, I will use the rock image. So rock.png. I will press control B to remove this. So rock.png. I will save. And now here we go. We have the, we have what we want. This was the practical exercise. Make sure that you are able to do this by yourself. So now what I will do is I will remove the green. I will reput the welcome image. And uh, actually I will put the background color to colors.red accent. So now we are back with our previous app and we will keep working on this one. That's it. And I see you in the next one. I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to use the widget columns. So you can see inside the body with inside the body argument, we have the center widget. Okay. This means we can put only one widget, but what happens if we want to have a button over this image? For this, you need to wrap the center, or actually we can wrap the image. So I will say right click, refactor, and I will use the wrap with a column, just like this. Perfect. And now we are able to put multiple widgets inside the column. You can see the column, instead of taking a child like the center, it take children, which mean it's a list of multiple widget. And in Flutter, this, the, the square bracket mean it's a list. So you can put the image and we could put another one right under. Oops, sorry. I made a mistake. I will copy this and I will add another one answer and I will save. You will see we have two image. I will remove this one. Just keep one image. And in the next video, I will show you how to add a button. See you in the next one. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to add a button in your app. So inside, uh, just before the image asset, you will see that inside the list, every widget is separated with a comma. Okay. So I will write 
an elevated button, elevated button. You see, we have, we have it right there, elevated button, the first one. I press enter. And now we have all automatically the arguments on press and child. The reason is if you go over elevated button, you will see that the on press function is absolutely required. It will not work otherwise. And the child is also required. This means you absolutely need to put them. Otherwise, it will not work. Next, uh, you know, this is a widget and you need to separate every widget with a comma inside a list. So I put a comma at the end. We need to work on the onPress. The onPress for now will be an empty function. So a function with Flutter is this. So two, two different type of bracket. We have the first one when we can put arguments inside. And we have an, the other one. This is what we want to trigger, what we, what we want to happen when we press the button. I will show you uh, after how this is working. So the child will be a text widget. Again, remember, widgets start with a capital letter. You use the text widget and the data inside will be a string. The string will say, by example, click. You can see that we have a, a problem. This is because we need the const. I will now go at the end because we have two brackets and add the comma like this. I will save. And if I format document, this is way better to look at. All right, we have the button on the top, but the button is doing nothing for now. The next thing we want is inside the onPress, we have an empty function, but we want to trigger something. So I will click inside the thing to triggers and I will use what we have uh, used previously inside the dark fundamentals. I will use the print. So I will use this and the print start with the lowercase. Okay, make sure you click on this one and inside this will take any object. We will put a string. We will say uh, button pressed like this. And because you use a function, every trigger need to be separated with the semicolon. So if you want to add another print, Make sure that you add another print, you put the semicolon, you see? So button press number one, two, and three. So if I save the application, and now I will press Control G to open the terminal, okay? If I press on the click button, oh, you need to make sure that you go inside the tab debug console. You will see that I have button press one, button press two, and button press three we have all the prints inside. I will remove two of them. I will just keep the button pressed. I will save. And now I can click again and you will see button pressed. So the button is now working. I will press Control G to remove this and we will remove the print because we will not use it anymore. This was just to show you that the button is now working. Um, what we want to do on the next video is every time we click on the, the button, we want to change the image. We want to switch between this image and another one. How do we do this? I will show you this in the next video. Bye. Before we work on the logic to create when you press on the button to change the image, I just want to show you how you can change the look of the button if you want to change the color. For this, you go inside the elevated button and you add an argument which is called style. This one, to change the style of a button, is very simple. You recall the name of the button. So this one is the elevated button. Elevated button. And you say dot style from. All right, you just use this one. Inside, you will have the color, which is the background color. You can press on this argument. And now you use the color widget, which we I already showed you how. It's colors with the S with the capital letter dot, you can use by example, uh, green. Now, if I save, you will see the button is now green. You can change other arguments. If I put the comma, you can put other arguments, like if you want to change other things for the button. This is all the styles. All right, so this was how to change the style. For the color, I will use the red accent and I will format document and save. That's it. See you in the next video, bye. In this video, I will show you how you can click on this button to change the image and switch between one and the other. 
All right, so keep the focus on this one. It will be a little bit harder than the other video we have done. First, we will go inside uh, on the top and I will create, uh, before the class, I will create two variables and those two will be strings. So I will say string. This one will be called the image path and the image path will be a string, obviously, and it will be the, the path of the first image, so this one. So instead of writing the path like this, I will copy this and put it inside like that. Oops, sorry, like that. And put the semicolon at the end. Make sure that this is like that. I will call this one the image path one. And I will do the same thing for the other path. So I will say string image path two. And I will replace the welcome. If I click on this explorer, the image, I will use the image ea.png. I will use control B to remove the sign. I will use yay.png. All right, so now what we can do is we can create a logic. If we click on the button, then show another image. So what we go is inside the unpress, we go inside and we say if we create a condition, if the, uh, sorry, first we need to create a current image. So we can say the string, uh, yeah, we can say string current path. This will be the path that we will put in the image. And this one can be, by example, the image path one. Okay. This is when we start the first, the first uh, value is the image path. So I will use the current path and put it inside the image. I will replace the image asset with the current path. And the logic would be if the current path is currently equal to the image path one, then we need to open the bracket. We say, then we will set the current path to the image path two. And you need to put the summary bracket, the semicolon at the end. All right. So if the current path is equal to the image one, then the current path will be equal to the other image. We can do the else condition. So else, otherwise, this means it will be the image path two. We do the invert. So we'll say the current path is now equal to the image path one. I will save. So now it should work, but it will not work. So I will save the application and I will click on this. You see, it's not working, but it work in the the value will change, but not the screen. I can prove, uh, I can show you this by example, if I, after the on press, after the condition, I can say print the current path with the semicolon. Now, if I open the terminal with control G, you will see when I press on the click, uh, let me control save because we just added the print. I will click on click. You will see the image change. The path will change. It's yay and welcome, yay and welcome. But the screen doesn't refresh. I will press Ctrl G, and now I will delete the print first. How do we refresh the screen? How do we tell Flutter to refresh the screen? For this, you need to use the set state. So when you call the unpress, you use the set set state. You will see s set oops set state. I don't know why I don't have the option. Oh yeah, I know why I don't have the option. If you want to refresh the screen, if you remember, you need to use the state less, uh, state full widget. Stateless will never change the screen. So you can go over the stateless widget. You can, uh, you can, sorry, you can right click the stateless widget and you can click refactor. This will tell you convert to a stateful widget. And you click on this. Perfect. Now it's the, it's a stateful widget and we will be able to use the set state. So on the unpress. So if I just save, it will still not work. You can see it's not working. You need to use the set state. So the, in the unpress function, I will say set state. You will use the first option set state like this. This tells Flutter refresh the screen, but you need to put all the thing that you want to refresh inside the set state. I will format document save. And now when I press on the click, oh, nothing happened. So I will refresh again. 
and now it's it's working. So I just save again, or you can click the the restart if you want. So I will restart the application, and now when you click on click, you see the image change between one and the other. So that was it, how to change the image. And I see you on the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to use a widget called the sized box. So uh, what what this will do is, let me show you. You see the, the button and the app bar? We want to add a space between both of them because it's very close. So you can go inside the list of widgets inside the column. And before the elevated button, which is the click button, we will add a widget with the capital letter, size at box. You click on enter. And now you make sure to put a comma because we are inside a list and every widget is separated with a comma. The size at box need to be a constant. And uh, inside you would press control space to have the options. And we want to use the height argument. And we will say, if we go over, you will see that this take a double, okay? So we will say, 50.0 and I will save. You will see that now we have a little spacing of 50 pixel between the welcome and the click. We can do the same thing between the elevated button and the image asset. Okay, I just copy paste the size of box and now I will save. We have a little space there also. This was the size of box widget. In this video, I will show you a widget called the single child scroll view. Let's say inside your, your application, you add three other image. So you see, we have the image asset. I will copy this one and inside the list, inside the column, we will add two other image and I will save. You see that the screen is not scrollable and we have a problem because the flutter is telling us, okay, we have, this is not working. We can't put every widget inside the screen because we, you don't have place, you don't have enough place. For this, you can wrap everything. So we will go over the center widget and I will right click, refactor, and I will wrap with a widget. I click on this and I, and I use the single child scroll. And if I press control space, I have the option single child scroll view with a capital letter. If now we save, you will see the screen is now scrollable. And this was the single child scroll view. See you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to create a list dot generate. So if you don't want to put three times the same image, you can create a list that will replicate this image X many times. So five times, 10 times or whatever. Let me show you how it works. First thing first. You will need to create the list dot generate. Okay. And you press enter. This is the widget list dot generate. You generate a list and you can see that we have first thing first, an error. If I go over, you will see that we have the error. The widget type list can't be assigned to the list type widget. So you can't put a list inside a place where we expect to have a widget. Because you can see that the, ele the column, the column is a list of multiple widget. And right now we try to tell Flutter, all right, I want to put a list inside a list of multiple widget where, where I'm supposed to put only one widget. What do we use in this case? If you remember, you can use the column widget. So we'll put a column inside a column. That's that work. It's perfect. So I will say column. I use the column widget and I put my comma to make sure that we separate every widget. Inside you have the children. If you remember the children, we have already used this one. The children is a list of widget. And instead of putting a widget inside the list, we remove the list and we put the list that generate inside. So I will delete this and I will put list dot generate and I press enter, this will automatically put everything. I will format document. And now you see the length is how many items we want to generate. I will say I want to generate four of them. And inside the, the little arrow will tell you, I want to put, what do you want to create five times? So I will take the image asset. I will cut this, remove the comma. 
because we only need one comma. And in the null, we will replace this with the image asset. Since we have two comma, uh, two uh, bracket, I put the comma between format document, and now I save. You will see that now on the screen we have four image generated because we use the list that generate four items and this is the image asset. Maybe you wonder what is this little uh, little thing? I will tell you what is this in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how you can use the arrow instead of the empty function. Okay. So what you see right there is you can either use the arrow to display the image asset, or you can remove this and use the curly bracket and return the same image with the semicolon at the end. This will do the same thing, okay? So you can either use the bracket and return something inside, or you can just use, if I control Z, you can just use the arrow and it will do the same thing. What is the difference? You can see this one will allow you to only return one thing. But in the other case, if you use instead the, um, the bracket and return something, you could create, by example, a print function before to write something. Or you could do other stuff before returning the image. Okay, this is the only thing. Like this, you can put multiple things inside but if you use the arrow, you can put only one thing. Okay, so now you know if you see the arrow with Flutter, you understand a little bit more. Let me give you another example. You can see that inside the unpress elevated button, we use the empty function and inside we put something which is the set state. But let's say we take the set state, I will cut this, control X, and now I will replace this curly bracket with the arrow and I will re-put the set state after. I will remove the semicolon. You see, this will do the exact same thing. But when we press on this, at this point, because we use the arrow, we can only do one thing. We can only set state and do this stuff. But if you use the curly bracket, which I usually always use because, I don't know, it's just something I prefer, you can add before the print function, by example, hello, and put the semicolon. All right, this was the difference between the arrow and the normal function. One can allow you to do one thing and the other one can allow you to do multiple things. But I always prefer to use the, uh, the curly bracket. Uh, sometime I will use the arrow when the code will automatically give it to me, you know? So that was it, see you in the next video, bye. Our next challenge inside this course is to create another button and this one will add other image. So instead of having always four image, we want to start with one image. And when we press the other button, this will add an image inside the list. So this is the next challenge we want to do. I will show you right now how to create this. So um, first thing first, we will need to create a variable int with the number of item inside. So you can see that in the list that generate, we have four item, but we will replace this with a variable. For this, we will go before the build, okay? Because the build will, re will be rebuilt every time we set state. So we need to, to set this information before. I will say int uh, current uh, number of image is equal to one when we start. And now I will take this variable, which is an int. I will copy this and put it instead of the four. Boom, just like this. And now if we save, you will see that we have only one image. But how can we add one to this, this number of image? First, I will add another button. So you can see that we have this elevated button, but instead you can just copy paste if you want, but I will recreate it. So right under, I will say elevated button, boom. And I will, the unpress, I will put an empty function for now, the child, will be a text widget. Inside I will say add an image. And then I will put my comma and my other comma and I will add a const. I will format document now, okay? So you can see this is the elevated button I just created. On the unpress, what we will do is, if you remember, when I add an item, 
uh, this will have now two image if I add an item, but I need to refresh the screen. So we need to start with the set state like this, this function set state. And inside you can create your logic. By example, you could say um, number of image is equal to the number of image plus one. And you put your semicolon. I form a document and I save. And now if I press on the add image, this add a number, this add one to the number of image. And we can see it on the screen. The, the screen will refresh because we use the set state. I can re-click on it. You see now we have three image. All right, that's pretty cool. And if we click uh, this button, all the image will change. Okay, so that was it. Uh, we can just change the color of the button. I will use this, the style of the other button, copy this, because I want the red accent instead of this, uh, this red, it's a little difference. I will go in this elevated button and I add the style for my document, save. Okay, make sure that your code is similar. If you have red errors, you just put your cursor over the errors and you try to find the problem. So this was pretty simple. I will refresh the, the entire application. I like to do this because if you do this, this will reset the value of number of image. And this was it. I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how you can put two widgets, one after the other. So instead of one over the other, it will be inside a horizontal axis. But just first, I want to show you a couple of things. You can see that the number of image, instead of doing this logic, you could just say plus plus and in coding, this will be the same thing. This adding two plus will do the same thing as adding one. And I will save to show you how it works. So if I click on add an image, you will see it work just as the same. It's the same thing, it's just a shortcut. The other thing I want to do is you see how we don't have a space between those two image. I want to add a little size box. So we can add this size box, we'll copy this, and I will put it between those two elevated buttons. So you have this one and this one. I will put it between both of them like this, and I will save. You see now we have a little spacing. All right, now we want to put this inside a row. So instead of a column, we want to put this in a row. Let me show you how it works. First, we will take this elevated button or you can, yeah, you can take the elevated button. You can right click, refactor and wrap with a row widget like this. Okay, so you have the row. Now this elevated button is inside a row. So if I save, you will see it's a little difference. It's now inside a row. The next thing you want is to put the other elevated button inside this list of widget, which is inside the row. So we'll go take the other elevated button. I go down. I take this. I will take this with the size box. I will cut control X. And now I can go right after the other elevated button. You see this button will end right there with the comma. And I will add all the code right there and I will save. Okay. You see inside the row, we have the children the list in the list of widget, we have the first one, the elevated button, the second one, the sized box, and the third one, the elevated button. If we save, you see that we don't have any space between both widget. This is because the sized box use the height 50, but this doesn't change anything because we use a row widget now. So you can replace the height with the width like this. Now, if you save, you will see you have a spacing. But how do we put the row and the widget inside in the center. For this, you can go inside the row and there is an argument called the main axis alignment. This one will take the main axis alignment widget dot center. And now if you save, you will see that this is now in the center. How does this work? So if you go inside, you see that you have also the cross axis alignment. So in a row, the main axis of the row is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical because it's the other axis. So we want to change the, the, the location of the widget inside the main axis alignment. 
That's why we have used this one. This was the raw widget inside your Flutter app. And you can see that we still have everything that works. The click button still work and the add an image still work also. I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how you could display the number of image inside the button add an image. So what we will do is we'll find this button, add an image. It's this button, elevated button with the text add an image. Inside you have the text, which we will try to put the counter or the number of image inside. For this, you can use the dollar sign. This will tell Flutter that the next thing you want to put is a variable and not a plain text. And you can just press enter because you see we have the number of image. So you start to write number of image. And now you see you have a problem. This is because it's not a constant anymore. If you save, you will see that you have add an image and you have six after. This is the number of image we have on the screen. You can put also the bracket if you want. This will be in plain text. So if you save, you have the number of image right in like this. So this was how to add a variable inside a text. I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how you can navigate through another page. So instead of clicking this button and changing the image, we will click on this button and we will go inside another page. So let's clean our files inside the main. So I will control B to move this on the side. What I will do is I will keep the row. I will keep the elevated button. That's all good, but I will remove everything that is inside. So you can see that the unpress, I will remove the set state number of image. I will clean everything. So we remove the unpress. We remove also the other unpress for the other button. So both unpress are empty functions now. Next, we will say we will replace the add an image by register. I will add a constant. Okay. And I will add the other button. The other button will be login. So if you save, this is what you should see on the screen. After this, we will go down and in the column and the list generate image asset, we will just take the image asset. I will cut this and I will delete the column widget because I just want to have the image asset. I will save. Now we only have one image. Great. The next thing we want to do is we will go on the top and we will remove the image path. We will, we will not work, we will not use the switch button anymore. So I will just take the image path welcome. I will copy this and I will remove those three string we have created, the image path two and uh, the image path one, two and current path. Let's remove all of this. You see we have the error now on the little red thing. If you go down, you will see the error. We replace the image as set with the image path. So I will put the this and the image path. Great. Nothing has changed, but now we don't have the variable anymore. Uh, we need to clean other stuff. Um, do we need? Actually, everything is now perfect now. Oh yeah, we just need to remove the int number of image. We don't need this anymore. I remove this and now everything is fine. All right, so our goal is since we have cleaned everything, those two buttons do nothing. And what we want is when we click on this one, we want to go in another page. So I will go inside the elevated button login. And what I will do is I will say navigator. Uh, actually, I think I will do it on the next video. Okay. Because this video was just to clean the project. I will call this video clean the project. I see you in the next video to use the navigator. Bye. It's now time to learn how to navigate through a different page. Now that we have cleaned the entire project, we will use the login button to navigate through a different page. So I will say navigator. You will see this one have a lot to remember, but um, yeah, it's just with practice. You will remember navigator with a capital letter. Then you will say dot of like this of, and you will press enter. This will write of context for you. The context, what is the context in Flutter is just a bridge. Okay. So every time you switch pages or you move with Flutter, you create other stuff. 
Flutter need to understand what happened previously, what will happen next, and just link everything together. And everything is linked with the context, okay? It's just a bridge. So with what happened previously and what is currently happening, we have the context of what happened in the screen, in the app, Flutter understand what it can do next. So you see navigator.ofcontext.push because we want to push another page over this one. We'll press enter. Inside we need to put a route, so another page. For this, you use the material page, uh, uh, not material page route, and you press enter. All right. At the end, I will add the semicolon, okay? And I will add also the comma, and I will format document, okay? So it's cleaner. The builder, how do we know what we put inside this? If you go over the builder argument, you will see that this will take, you have the function builder. This will only take a build context inside. So the only thing you need to do is put a function build context. So I will create a function, an empty function, and inside I put the context. Perfect. Now you can see that if we go inside, we need to return something. So causing null to be returned, we need to return something inside. So I will say return, and what I will return is the other page. For this, we need to press Control B and create another page. So I will say, right click, I will create a folder. This folder will be called pages. Okay, I will press enter. And now inside this pages folder, I will right click again and add a new file. This file will be called by example, the login page. So when you create another file, make sure that everything is lowercase and you don't put spaces. You just put uh, bars like this to separate words. And you say dart. So login page dot dart. It's very important that you put the dot dart, otherwise it will not be a dart file. Now you can press enter. For this one, you need to start with the import. Okay, you write import and you write, you click enter. Inside you put the material. So this one, the material dart. You see we have the package for the material dart. You absolutely need to put this pretty much every time you need to code with Flutter. This will import all the widgets and everything you need to create Flutter. If you go inside the main, you will see on the top, we have the import material. It was already right in when we started. So in the login page, uh, we start by creating a stateless widget. So STL, you will see you have the option because we have the extension. So we use the stateless widget, you press enter. And now you need to call this class the same name as the file. You, you don't need to, but it's like what I do and it's better for like understanding what happened in the thing. It's not required, but it's what I do, okay? You should do it also. So you have the login page. I will call this one login page. If you double click and you press Control D, you will select the other one also. So you can change both of them at the same time. You can write login page, but make sure that every word start with a capital letter. Not like this one. This one use the capital letter on every word, but not the, the name of the file. Great. Inside, we will put a scaffold widget because the scaffold is the skeleton. And inside the scaffold, we will use the app bar argument with the app bar widget. Okay, just like this, very simple. Uh, after this, you can use, by example, the title argument, the text inside, because we want to have a text. The text, uh, the text widget will have inside a string. The string will be the login page. And you can put a constant. We are just creating another page, all right? The last thing we want to do is the center title set as true. Great. So now we can go inside the main and inside the main, we can put where we have the error right there in the return, we can put the name of the new class we created. So inside the login page, we have created the login page with the capital letters. And you press enter, you make sure that you have the semicolon, the, the bracket, and you put the semicolon. This is a constant, so you had const. You can save the application. And now when you press on login, Boom, you go inside another page, the login page. 
Great. You can see uh, just before we end this video, when I press on login, the the uh, app bar is not the same color. This is because we don't use the red accent color. We will just change this before we end this video. In the login page, you have the app bar and you can change the background color to colors dot red accent. I will press enter. And now we save and we can go inside the login page and you see we have the same color. The button, you will see we all automatically have a button on the leading that will allow us to return on the other page. Okay? So that's why we have a button on this page because it will allow us to remove the page we pushed over and show us the previous page. This was how to navigate inside your Flutter app. See you on the next video. Bye. This is your second practical exercise. What I want you to do is, uh, you can see inside the main, we have another elevated button, which is register. I want you to make sure that when you click on this button, you go inside another page, which is called the register page. All right. It's exactly the same thing we just did in the previous video with the login page, but I want to make sure that you are able to do it by yourself. You will see, it might be hard to remember like what you need to do, like uh, you, used to, you need to use the navigator. You can see in the login page, right? Um, in the main page, right there, you have the navigator that of context that push. Try, try not to just copy paste. Try to redo it by yourself inside the unpress function. And then try to create another page, another file, which is called the register page and build everything, okay? You just have to create the same thing, but with the register page inside, instead, instead, sorry. So I see you in the next video with the solution. Uh, I will do it pretty fast and that's it. See you in the next one, bye. In this video, I will show you how to navigate through the register page right now. So first thing first, we will go inside the pages and I will go quite fast because we already did all this. So I will create a new file register uh, register page dot dart and then inside you will create the import of the material dart this one and then you can create a state less widget like this and i will write this one the register page then inside the return i will create a scaffold because i want a skeleton of the app I will create a nav bar with the app bar widget. Sorry, app bar widget. And inside the app bar, I will create the title, which is a text widget. The text will be a register, a register page. And then the center title, center title will be true. True. And finally, the color, color, background color will be will be colors that red accents. Perfect. I will save. And now I just need to put a constant like this and register page. I will, oops, sorry. I will close this. I will close also the login page and I will go inside the on press. I will create the navigator navigator dot of context dot push. And inside we use the material page route like this. The builder, I will put my semicolon at the end first, my comma, because we have two bracket. I will save format document. The builder will take a, a function with a context inside. So we create an empty function with the context inside. And we will return the new page we created, which is the register page. I will put my semicolon, add my constant like this. I will save. Great. Now, if we press on register, we go inside the register page and log in, go inside the login page. That was the solution of the practical exercise. See you in the next video. Bye. I hope you have learned a lot in this one hour 30. And that's it for today. I see you in the next video. Bye.